What is going on guys? Good morning. Happy Friday. Got my cup of joe here. What I'm doing these days is, I say these days, but just recently um, I was talking to my brother about this a little bit as well, is I want to obviously start to understand order flow even more um, like in depth. So just <clears throat> been watching a lot of videos on order flow, how it works. Um, Umar, Ashraf, shout out to him, Tradezilla, uh, creator. He talks about it all the time, how important it is. Obviously, you're already reading your key levels, but then knowing how many orders or how little orders are going in can help you anticipate a particular move on a supply and demand trade, support resistance, break of highs, break of lows, it, pretty much anywhere in the market, it does help. So just really diving into this, just taking it a step deeper. Um, but today, obviously, we had news, the preliminary come out. Uh, YM, I was speaking at it a second ago, YM ended up dumping, um, just continuing to go to the downside, still falling at this point. There's a weekly level, 38132, that I feel it will go to. Right now it's 1033 in the morning. Um, and then NQ, you know, ended up die, just nose diving as well from 18499, where it started this morning, to 18286 as we speak. <clears throat> and it doesn't look like it's going to slow down. It might <clears throat> retest a little bit, but I feel to go to the bottom of this box, 18200 area, 215, 222, where it's gone previously, hits off of that, and then just probably consolidates the rest of the day. I don't see any more of a, <clears throat> I'm sorry, a huge push. That'll be taking place later on in the afternoon. It's, it's possible. Um, but... The highest I believe it'll go is 18.411, which is at the top of that box that we drew, the one-hour box. Um, but that will probably only happen until the afternoon. I don't see that happening, um, you know, when institutions and banks end up going to lunch. I should say bank traders. I mean, banks don't go to lunch, right? Um, <clears throat> volume is very low around that time. So here in probably the next 30 minutes, it's going to slow down tremendously. And then 12.30, 1.30, 2.30, now is going to start picking up 2.30. People are going to start getting back on their computers. 2.45, 3, 3.30, now we're going to start booming because market's obviously going to close at 4, 4.30. I mean, technically, in theory, it is till 5. But, you know, that that's people are getting off. Um, I saw a, a post on Instagram, which is very interesting. I never really thought about it this way. It's... Um, it's uh, S.J. Burns or whatever. I follow him on an IG. I forget what his full name is, but it's like S.J. Joseph Burns or something like that. He's a trader. And he always puts out his tweets, but what he posts is like his his X or his Twitter um, posts. And he says, futures traders are the traders that open up the market. Options traders are the ones that close the market, which is so true because prices are so cheap at the end of the day you know, might be 50 bucks for, uh, you know, an SPX contract, which is insane. SPX is usually pretty, a couple hundred bucks at least to get in a move like that, you know, 200, 300 bucks, 50 bucks, that thing ends up rallying, you know, between HTF, the algos, and then just where institutional or bank traders want that move to be before the next day to make sure that they, you know, hit the numbers they need to, which they have time and they've got the liquid to do it. It pushed that bad boy up. What is the worst that an option trader at the end of the day can lose out on? 50 bucks, if that's how much the option was, right? They have the option, but not obligated to, you know, buy and or sell at the, you know, at the next price. So you can take it out if you're like, I don't like this, or you can just let it go to zero and let the contract decay, which then turns, you know, then, then you just turn it loose and you lose 50 bucks. That is not bad. That's like, it's already got a stop loss built in. So I've dabbled in the options as well on Weeble. Um, you know, we may we may get back into that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I, I do enjoy the futures. I do enjoy um, the account size. 300K is lovely. Jeez. Um, and so I just want to continue to keep that thing rolling. You know what I'm saying? I mean... I've, once upon a time, I haven't even told you guys this before, and it's Friday today, I do not lift for the record, um, I'm going into the gym here shortly to train a client, a receiver, and then um, that's pretty much it for the day, 
right? Tomorrow we've got seven on seven uh, with Team GSP. If you guys don't follow at GSP Training, go check that out so you guys can see what we have going on within all things within the facility and, you know, kind of like what I do and what all the coaches do inside the building. So I think you guys will really enjoy that page. Um, but nevertheless, uh, yeah, I, I once upon a time had six accounts, I want to say, funded on, um, I take that back, not six accounts funded. I was $3,000 or $2,200 away from hitting that 320 mark, the one I was telling you about, on six accounts, which is wild. That was group trading, so that's $1.8 million would have been funded, which is crazy, which is like, you know, real, real good money. Just to put that in perspective, so you guys understand, and I've told you this in the past videos, if you've not, um, you know, if you didn't hear it or you missed it, you have the ability on uh, Apex Funded Trader to be funded $6 million. If you have all $300,000 accounts, you can get 20 PA accounts at one time. You can group trade them. So I can make, you know, let's just call it a thousand bucks just for round numbers to make it really easy math for everybody. If I make a thousand bucks, which remember it's a 300K account, 3% or excuse me, 1% is 3K. So half a percent would be 1.5. So I'm not even going for half a percent. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm being very conservative, which is good, which is a good thing. You should obviously preserve your capital. You don't need to push for, I need 1%. I need 1%. Is it doable in NQ, in YM on a daily basis, even in a range? Can you make 3K? Absolutely. But that's not really the point. The point is, is do I or don't I see this move? If I'm waiting and being disciplined on my particular setup, then there just are days that like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to push it. And why would you, if you have, you know, if, if you've got all that capital, you know what I'm saying, to, to deploy, I mean, you're talking about $6 million, guys, that you're funded. So again, let's put this back in perspective. All right, 20 accounts, 30, or 30, $300,000, okay, $6 million. If I make 1%, or right, let's go down to, again, we said the 1000 bucks. sorry. I'm going to make 20 grand. 20 accounts, right? And I'm group trading them. So the same trade I take, NQ... I joint trade them. I don't have to like sell, 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 or buy, 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 buy. It's they're all together. And I know you're like, okay, yeah, obviously that's what group trades means. But I'm saying it's very seamless. You click that, you hit buy on however many contracts you're trying to go in on that particular move. You buy it. All the orders are filled simultaneously. You get in, boom. You're only what's good for your psychology too is you're only looking at one level, meaning one account is being traded. You're not seeing this thing be like you know, $20,000, $23,000, $25,000, because that would probably mess with you, especially if you're like maybe just being funded, you know, for guys who are more experienced or gals who are more experienced, not probably that big of a deal. You've seen those numbers before. It doesn't really psych you out, but trust me when I tell you, if you're not used to those numbers, it's just like if you get a bunch of money or just like the whole, like the whole lottery situation, like people win the lottery and how many of those have you seen the articles and stuff that are like, oh, and now they're broke. Because they don't know what to do with half a billion dollars. They have no clue. And, they're, and then what ends up happening? Then you've got people who are like, gimme, gimme, gimme. Family members, oh, you remember me, da, 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 da. Like cousins of cousins of sisters. Of, it's like, bro, come on. Because they know you and know that they know you came up. So they're trying to obviously just leech off of you. It's very similar. It's just, but you're doing it on your own. And you're seeing these numbers happen. So you're like, Okay, well, let me just push for some more. I've got 50K right now, and I just made in, like, no time. Could be in 30 minutes. It could be in three minutes. I want to push for 100. You could potentially blow your account because you're trying to be too greedy. That's what I'm trying to get at. That's what I'm trying to talk to you about. 1%, right? $20,000. 20 accounts, 1K. On 300,000, so I'm not even pushing for half a percent. So I'm being very conservative, so that my risk should be... 500 bucks, let's say, right? That would be a two to one risk to reward ratio. So let's just say those are my numbers for round numbers. 20K, guys, that's not 20K a week. That's not 20K a month. You just made $20,000 in a day, in one day. You do that two times, 
I mean, of course, I'd love to tell, you know, everybody here, okay, you do that Monday through Friday and you're going to end up making how much? A hundred K in a week. You just made a salary. I mean, a one day, that's obviously close to some people's salary. Think about that. So I tell people that I know that are close to me and then I also like am telling you now. This profession, if you will, is arguably one of the hardest things to do. Sorry, I'm like looking at the market as well. This is by far one of the hardest things you can do because I have to master my mind. As crazy as this may seem, and again, I always say this, like me playing in the NFL is not even close to the kind of mental um, just beating that the market does to me that uh, like learning the plays, learning the plays, do I have any here? Where's that binder? It might be in my car. Hold on. I might have some down here actually. Let's see. Uh, I don't think so actually. If I get some, I know for a fact that I have them in the car. I'll show them to you. I will show, actually I have some here. On this, uh, on this binder thing. Here we go. I'm going to give you a perfect example right here. Wait, is it this binder or is it the other one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Here we go, guys. Look, this is, this is a Falcons book. You guys see it? Let's see if that focuses up. You can see the emblem right there. Boom. Okay, check this out. I'm going to read a play to you really quick because I'm just going to put this, I'm going to put this in perspective. We got time, right? Ain't no rush. I got a couple plays, but this is how I learn it. You know what I'm saying? Like I have to write it out and then that way I know everybody's route. So if they ask me to go play outside and I play slot normally, which is just the inside receiver for those of you who are not familiar, I can do everything. They want to put me a fucking running back. I can do that too. It doesn't matter. Okay. Check this out. I'm going to read these plays to you. I have obviously... Pages and pages and pages. All right, ready? This that I'm, re that I'm telling you is also like anything else. It's just learning, writing it out, understanding it, and then memorizing it. And then doing it without any hesitation and not messing it up. Because otherwise, you're not going to play if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, check it out. So this is the 11 formation. Y fly trio, right? Three jet, Y choice, F water. Here's another one. H bump, double right, A, three scat, Y rub, X under. And I'll give you one more. Y fly, double left clamp, three scat, F looky, Z bozo. Guys, these are plays that I have to write out. I don't actually have to write out anything. But that I write out to learn in that is ten times easier than what I have to do on a day-to-day -day basis in the market. So the payoff, let's go back to the money again one more time. And I'm just going to give you a rough idea of what I, matter of fact, let's not give you a rough idea. Let's give you really what it is. Okay, see these? These are my contracts. Okay, let me show you something. We're going to just get down to the needy gritty here because why not? I said, we got time. Getting ready to leave for the gym here in a minute. I got to train this receiver. See this right here? What's that say? NFL contract. This is no games, guys. Okay, I don't, why do I need to lie to you about this? Okay, you want to see something? 2018 to 2020, obviously I did not play all these years. Had I done that, I would have got this entire contract. Let me just show you. Let's see if that will focus. Can you guys see that? Come on, bro. Hold on. I'm going to click this button on the camera. Bruh. If 
you guys need to like pause that or like see that. Why is this not? I don't understand. Hold on. Ooh, ooh, that was it. That was it. Anyways, guys, you get the point. I'm going to read it to you. It, the two numbers are if you're on the uh, roster or if you're on the practice squad. Sorry, this is like super zoomed in. 480 was the first year. The second one is 363 if you're on the P squad. Second year, 570. 570,000. Second one, 393 if you're on the P squad. 660 is third year, which would be 2020. And third year P squad, 423 for the practice squad. Now, the other one is just a practice contract, meaning they released me at one point and then they brought me back on. Okay. So I'll just show you this. This is essentially just going to show you like the compensation that they paid me. All right. There's another. Oh, shit. Whee. There's another. Boom. Got the old Nike, or I was say Nike, NFL emblem. Okay, this is what I was getting paid per week. Right here where my finger is. Can you see that right there? So, now, let's go back. And now I now you've got a good understanding of what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, is I am okay, and nobody else but me is going to understand this. And that's okay as well. It's frustrating at times because not everybody's understanding what I'm doing or why I'm going through this pain of losing accounts. And people will look at me and go, oh man, like maybe you're not that good of a trader because I haven't had millions of dollars in payouts. I don't know. You're not understanding. Remember, I've been doing this for two years. It's still very fresh. And if anybody knows anything about trading, they know that that sweet spot is anywhere between like year. It's kind of a bigger, you know, range, but typically it's year like four to like seven is when it's like, boom, it hits. I have a different mentality. Meaning I've been to places like these where less than 1% of the population get into those doors. They say less than 10% make it into trading. So I already have a mentality that's different than every single other trader that you watch that I even watch and I'm like, damn, I want that life. Because I have made it into a bracket that they are, have not been able to make it into. So I know that I will be able to cut the fat and learn from my mistakes very quickly because as, as stressful as blowing accounts is, I'm going to make it and I'm going to make it huge, but that's not for me to be like, you'll see, I don't hey, look, I'm just talking to you because again, remember this is for my kids, kids. I'm telling you now because this is like in this interim, in term of frustration of like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, is this the right profession? Am I picking the right thing? Is like all these thoughts, guys. Like I am not, I'm a human being at the end of the day. These are thoughts that, that cross my mind all the time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like here we go again. So guys, getting in shape is crazy as it seems. Although there's a big, big majority of people that would never go through the things that I went through on the football field or in the gym to prepare me for the football field that would never put as much work in as I did to get where I got is solely, is, is, is easy compared to honestly, and I'm not saying like that lightly, is easy compared to what I'm trying to do in the markets. But now let's go back to the $6 million funded. How much was I making in one year? How much did I say that if you made Monday through Friday, you're 20 grand a day, which is just $1,000 a day on that group trading account on that 6 million funded was how much? A hundred grand in a week. I have to go through an entire 17 week season, 18 week season for that cash. 
and I have to perform every single day. Doesn't mean I don't have to perform in the market because I do as well. You get what I'm saying? But the difference is, is I have a boss in the NFL. No matter how flashy, no matter how cool it looks, no matter what car I drive, no matter how good my fits look, no matter, I don't care what society sees me as because I am no longer an NFL player. Because I know what I bring to the, what was that? That was weird as hell. Because I know what I have to offer. You know what I'm saying? As I told you, I'm not only a day trader, but I'm a personal trainer. I can do the personal training guys. And I don't, I would not sweat on the money that I make, you know, the, the places that I live or the places that I travel to. I can, like, I would be fine but I am not settling because I never settled when I played in the NFL. I rolled the dice on me. So I'm rolling the dice on me again because I'm 28 about to be 29 in June, June 9th to be exact. And so why would I stop going now? If this took another three years, which, oh my God, just thinking about that is like, oh, please no. But I am damn near 100% confident that the minute the payouts start coming in in a big way, it's not even going to matter. The cost for learning or cost of tuition, if you will, is, is, is nominal, is minimal compared to the money, 100 grand in a week, guys, $20,000 in a day, guys, in a day. This is worth it for me, maybe not for you, but for me, it is. So if you're watching this, I hope it's a, a little bit of a word of encouragement, but trust me when I tell you, this market will kick your ass every day. It will. Until you decide, okay, I'm, and you may not even realize it, but subconsciously you're gambling until you really start to learn about this market. And then when you learn about it and take courses and study and do what you're supposed to do and put in the time and put in more time than everybody else and come home and become obsessed with it is when it will start to click. It's clicking for me. I blow an account. Everybody's going, you're trash. Okay. In your eyes, I know where I started when I was just clicking buy and sell and had no fucking clue what I was doing or why I did it for that matter. I was just like... I hope it goes up. I, I mean, it looks like no clue. I have a very good understanding. The issue is, is my risk management, the amount of size I like to put on trades. That's why I blow up accounts because I want to go fast because I want to get to the money. I have to compound. I have to be patient. I know what my issues are, but I have to fix them and it doesn't happen overnight. But the more discipline and the more I can tap into, don't do that, don't take that big trade, don't take that kind of risk, don't, you know what I'm saying, size up so heavy, is when I will get on the other side of profitability. I know that, I'm saying that to the camera right now and I know that already. But I promise you, I'm turning the corner, I'm right there. I told you already, I've made money out of the markets. I've made good money out of the markets. So I've already proven to myself, I can do this. And I'm not stopping. But I'm just telling you, kids, I'm telling you, viewers, I'm telling you that you can do this as well. But the NFL, the memorization of hundreds of plays, and hearing this in the huddle by Matt Ryan, why fly trio, right three jet, why choice F water, on one, ready break run to the line and go execute that is not even fucking close to what you have to do in this market every day. It doesn't even compare, which is nuts to say. So kudos to those traders that are doing it right now because they have a skill that I want and that I'm acquiring at their level. And again, as I told you before, I'm not here to call anybody out, but there's also a lot of fugazi as well where they're not actually genuine, where they're not actually for real, where they're not actually making the money. Maybe they're more marketers than anything. Maybe they got an affiliate link that they're just funneling people through and that's how they live their life and that's how they drive the car they want to drive and that's how they 
take the vacations and do, and maybe they're not placing a trade at all. So you also have to keep that in mind that that is very much a possibility. However, that's not even any of my business, nor do I care because I'm focused on what? Me and on my journey. But what I will tell you is that payoff that we just talked about with $6 million funded on Apex, and that's just one firm to be, to be exact. You get a hundred grand, guys, in a week, however it happens. Let's call it a month, and you go that slow. You make 200 bucks a day, a hundred dollars a day, times 20 accounts is what? Two grand a day. You can now do, with a $300,000 account, guys, to make $200 a day, you could do that Monday through Friday, and that wouldn't be hard. That is so, guys, what is that? That's like point something percent, like that's not even half a percent. That's not even a quarter of a percent. Because a quarter of a percent will be 750. Like you're going lower than that, guys, lower than a quarter of a percent. So then your risk could be super tight too. My point is, is this, you make $200 a day, you do that five days a week, that's 10 grand a week. And you're making $200 a day, over 20 accounts, granted. So you have $6 million funded I'm just trying to put these things in perspective. 10 grand, would, would you like 10 grand a week? I know as hell I would. 10 grand a week, that's $40,000 a month. $40,000 a month. Do you need to be right from now until kingdom come? No. And what I mean by that is, by that is, is God forbid you blow the account, the $6 million, and you have to start all over. You get five, six, seven payouts, meaning like, you know, months down the, that's a lot, that's a long time, but I'm just saying, you get your payouts and you're making your good money and you're pulling money out of there and you're being conservative and you're stashing it and you're putting it in the bank or you're putting it in assets and you're letting that money make you money. Guys, you only have to be right a couple times and then you're set for life and now you become the monopoly man. Now you are the one that's putting houses on the board and everybody who comes and passes goes has gotta pay you. Rental properties, hotels, all that. Whatever hustles you have that are making you money, that's passive, that you can sit down and watch Netflix with your boyfriend or your girlfriend and just vibe and that money's coming in and you know eight, 10, 12, 15, 20, 50,000 dollars is coming in per month and you don't even have to click the trade button buy or sell at any point in the day and you know that's coming in that guys is wealth that right there is how you start to win the game of life that is all i'm after so what i was saying is is like kudos to those guys that are making money they have really the most important skill which is being able to like extract money out of the markets and are patient enough and are wise enough to wait on their setups and wait on the opportunity and then seize the moment the reality is, and the conundrum is, is those guys might have wished that, oh, I know how to make all this money. How cool would it be when they go to an NFL game, you know, because they have the money to and they get front row seats because they've got the bread, the bread to. They're like, man, that would be so cool if I was able. I only played high school football. How cool would it be to be an NFL player? I'm telling you now, it's cooler to do what you're doing. Because I have to perform every day in front of you, the front row guy who paid all cash, to sit at this game and watch this game for three hours. Guess what? The, after the three hours is done, you get to go home and go do whatever you want to do. I have to go back to work. Get back on a plane, land. We have that night off. We have a day off. Get back on Tuesday, right back to practice, right back to hitting, right back to getting after it. It doesn't suck. It's a great gig. I'm not shitting on, I would love, if the Falcons call me today, I would be like, let's ride. And I'm in shape to do it, 110%. But it's, I think at this juncture, hey, listen, God only knows. But at this juncture, I think that that part of my life is over. Who knows? Weirder things have happened. You know what I'm saying? Kurt Warner was a damn, you know, bag boy at damn Publix. Playing, you know, NFL Europe or whatever it was. And then guess what? Became a Hall of Famer. And played, proceeded to play another, you know, whatever, 13 years or whatever in the NFL. Like, dude, weirder things happen than just me, Julian, the one who's like, I'm a trader, I'm a trader. Go back to the NFL and then just be like, 
Uh, so these videos now are just turning into I make millions of dollars playing receiver again. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But what I'm telling you is that I have learned this skill over two years and I'm still learning and I'm going to continue to learn every day and continue to be that student. But I just want you to know that this football stuff is cool. Making money and being able to set your family up, your friends, your your loved ones to go wherever you want. As I say this all the time, to have financial time and location freedom and do whatever you want, whenever you want, drive the cars you want to drive. If that's what you like doing, that's your you know, hobby or whatever. Cars to me, it's not about the like having money for money's sake. It's about the freedom. The cars are like trophies to me. I love cars. I'm a car guy. To have a beautiful home is definitely a goal of mine. I don't need to have 10 homes all over the country. It would be cool. I'm more of a guy that I want to be able to go and feel like I'm not like, damn, okay, that's 20 grand a month. Okay, that mortgage is this much, you know, $40,000 a month. Okay, this one in LA, this one's, why? I'd rather have penthouses or apartments in multiple places in the world and be like, yeah, I've got a place over there in Japan. Yeah, I've got a place over here in Europe. Yeah, I've got a place over here in, in, you know, French Polynesia. Yes, I got a place over here in, you know, whatever. Now I've got a place over here and that is what I want. But again, that's not for me to like influence you to like, this is what you should want as well. But I'm, I shame on me if I do all those things and I never take my family or my niece and my nephew to these places and put them on a private jet and be able to show them this life. It's not about, okay, now you're going to be spoiled, although I'm going to spoil them because I love them and I love my family. I'm spoiling them and I want to make them cultured and I want to show them that there's a world outside of here because I had to do it in my 20s on not trading, but on a whole nother job. And that's what got me out to Europe. And that opened my eyes to so much possibility. It opened my mind to like, oh my gosh, like I just thought what happened in Georgia was what was happening everywhere. And like everybody lives different lives, but you need to go in order to understand it. But you need to have money to do it and then enjoy it and not just be like at the Motel 6 in Europe because you're just trying to get to Europe. That's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. But I want life experiences because when it boils down to it and when you're laying on your deathbed, Years and years and years down the road, God willing and not right now, that you're all you're gonna do is what you you like. You guys see it in movies, and it's the same thing that happens in real life. You just flash through. Your brain is such a supercomputer. You can flash through all the memories that you've ever had from when you were little to right now, and you're getting ready to take your last breaths. And guess what? It all is just because of what you have stored in here and how much fun or how much misery or how much you were cared for and how much you cared for them, your loved ones, your family, your friends. Did you feel like you did your life correctly? And you're laying there and you're like, this is it. I know that it's coming to an end. Did I do it right? That should wake you up slash freak you out slash excite you. And don't forget about the excite you because it means that, and, and this is my mindset, and I pray that everybody watching this has the exact same mentality. I know that my family that watches this, I know that my kids watching this already have this instilled in them because I tell them about this all the time. However, do not be afraid of anything. Like God is watching over you, obviously like, if you're doing things with pure intentions, if you're doing things with the right head on your shoulders, you have got nothing to lose. You've got to go for it because you will regret the things that you don't do or the things that you don't push for for the rest of your life. And as they call it these days, you will be an NPC a non-playing character or whatever it is, essentially just a robot, just walking around this world, letting time pass, being on TikTok all day, 
got this hunch on your neck because you always looked down at your phone all day. You're just trying to be entertained. You go home, you work your shitty job. You have like one or two happy experiences in your life when it really boils down and culminates to things. And then you're like, I wish I would have been able to do more. You can do more. You can. This is why against everybody else's wishes. Hey, why don't you just continue to like dive deeper into the training stuff? Because I love training, but I love trading more. And why do I love trading? Because I just told you, $6 million funded, $100,000 a week? Yeah, I'll take that. I do that for four weeks, a month straight, that's $400,000, almost half a million dollars. I do that for two months, I've got $800,000 in the bank. What I will do with that and turn that into, not about going to buy a $350,000 car now, it's what assets I'm putting that into so then I don't have to play the rat race game ever again. So if all hell breaks loose, I am still good and my family's good and their kids and their kids and that. And 800,000 won't do that. Trust me, we're we're gonna continue to go. But what's happening as I'm acquiring 800,000? Clearly my skill has to be getting better. Clearly my execution has to be getting better. All besides that, I can grab 20,000, 30,000, 50,000 and put that in another account and not have to worry about a drawdown rule of $7,500 and I can't lose that and oh my gosh, it's stressing me. I can take a $50,000 account and blow that and take that to zero. But what does my upside look like now? Because I'm not worried about a $7,000 drawdown. It's like, wait, so you don't really have $50,000 of cash. You really have, if there was a $7,000 drawdown, you really have what? $7,000 or $10,000 in that account. Virtual funds. This is a true 50 grand I can bring out in cash and show it to you. And then I can dump that into a broker, use leverage, and then I can multiply that. I turn that into 150 or 200 grand or a million dollars. Now I've got more money I can now deploy into assets. And then I rinse and repeat and I rinse and repeat and I rinse and repeat and I rinse and repeat. Now when I've got 20, 30, 40 properties and I'm making 50 to 100 to $250,000 per month, Now, if I decide I don't want to trade anymore, I think now it's appropriate to do so. But I'm not going to stop at making an extra 1,500 bucks a month. Something goes wrong and oh shit, God forbid something happens. I'm not prepared and or have the proper capital and cold hard cash on hand to be able to fix whatever problem's happening. I need the money not for money's sake or to be greedy or to be, I want to be, I'm a capitalist. and No. But don't be mistaken when money is what rules the world. Money is what opens the doors that you want to get into. Money is what allows you to get around the people that you watch on YouTube that you want to see or hang out with or be buds with because you feel that you can add value. I'm in the same bracket right now. And I've been in the 1% of people and guess what now I'm out of it so I'm now back into you know whatever middle class you want to call it and I'm going back up into the one percent again here shortly but I now am going to take that when I'm up there and vibrating if you will on the same frequency as those other high earners Iman Gaji, Jordan Welch, all these guys I watch I'm going to make those connections we're going to break bread we're going to be boys, we're going to, you know, if that's speaking into existence, if you will, fine. But I'm not here to play games. I know I can add value. It's not about being, you know, a, uh, you know, a moocher. And, oh, you know, bro, can can we hang? And I'm I'm blowing them. No, bro, you're successful. I'm also successful. Here's what I've done. Here's my resume, so to speak. I don't need to be with you, but I need to continue to make my network go up so that my net worth goes way up. I can't stay around the same people I'm already hanging around in order to make $100 million, which is the goal, which will happen. 
How do I get there? Get around people who are making that kind of money. Now, you're like, oh, you know, you don't need to do all that. Can't you just be happy with 10 million or 20 million? Sure. I'm not, I'm not gonna say that I won't be happy. What makes me the happiest is when I watch my entire family get on a private jet together because I plan the trip, everybody get on. And there's no questions asked. I'm gonna be happy when I see my niece and nephew on, like I said, the plane running around Stewardess, it's our own deal in a big penthouse and or hotel, you know, just living it up, eating good food, having people, having chefs come in. That is the life I have in my brain. That doesn't mean it's the same as yours. So don't take this the wrong way. You may be okay being in the one bedroom, one bath. So am I. But I have to succeed to such a level that I bring my family along. That is success in my eyes. Taking care of the people that took care of you when you had nothing. Or when you were little where you couldn't take care of yourself. I'm going to take care of everybody. Trading is not the only thing. The other businesses that I will start, the other businesses that I'm doing currently, that like, it will all come to fruition. I know I've been ranting. I'm getting ready to go to the gym now. I've got about 45 minutes till my session starts, so I got to get going here. But I wanted to talk to you guys about this. If you've been here for this long, for this 40-ish minutes, obviously I know my kids are here, but good. And I just hope it gives you perspective on what I've achieved. And most importantly, that you have to take some risks in life. You do. If you don't, don't expect a different result. Definition of insanity, right? Do the same thing, expect different results. It won't happen. And your level of vibration and what you think and what you do and how you maneuver and how you carry yourself is the people that you will attract around you. I want greatness for each and every one of you. I want you to understand that. For my kids, obviously you know that that's the case. But I want you guys that are watching this that are not my kids or my family to understand because my family already knows that. But I want you guys to be great. I do. Stop Settling for the subtle life. Because one day, it'll suddenly be over. So make a splash. Leave your stamp. Leave a legacy. And be great. Dare to be great. And those who don't resonate with that and are, man, why are you so serious and why are you always working and why are you always... You don't even need to be rude. Just remove yourself. Remove yourself from that environment. Because that person will never understand you. Nor will they help you get to the goals that you want. You can convince yourself that, no, but I need to... Well, they'll understand... If you've told them once, if you told them twice, if you told them three times, they're probably not going to get it if they've not understood your focus and they're not respecting it or going, hey, what are you doing? Can I sit in on some of the stuff like, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in what you got going on. Okay, you can ride with that. But somebody who wants to always go out and drink and party and do shit that's, that's going to be there in 20 years anyway, they're not focused. So they will stay in the same system that they hate so much. That they complain about every weekend that you guys go out. Oh man, I hate my job. I wonder why. Not me. Remember the name, guys. And I'm not trying to be cheeky. Remember the name. And I'm going to make sure that at the end of this entire journey, if you will, and when I'm on this camera and I, my hair doesn't look the same and I don't look the same and
that my companies are healthy, that my family is living the dream that they've always wanted to, they're vacationing because of me. My wife is happy. My kids are healthy and happy. But they know dad doesn't play games. They know dad's a hustler. Dad's a go-getter. I will not stop. Ever. Love you guys. Appreciate you being here. I don't think that this is the end. I'm sure I'll jump on again a little bit later. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a uh, kind of a perspective, if you will. Friday's perspective day. Maybe that's what we'll title it. So, maybe I will let this breathe. Maybe this will be the video for today. I mean, it was 46 minutes. I think it's important for you guys to have these once in a while. And maybe we make Fridays, Saturdays, because, again, I'm not working out, you know, some of those days. When things happen, guys, and we're going out of town, we're going on vacation, what, like, okay, cool, like, you're coming and we're going to obviously film that. But I just want you to know that trading's never going to stop. Continue to learn every single day. Be hungry for knowledge. And you will receive and you will earn everything that you want in this life. But that is going to be, you know, in correlation with how hard you work. No work, your reward is here. Hard work, working hard, your result will be here. It's that simple. It's the law of the universe. Love you guys. Have a great day. Say it with me if you know it. You are uniquely different. God took his time on you. You're one of one. And if nobody's told you today, I love you so much. Peace.